Good morning, subscribers, viewers, everybody walking in Christ. I um wanted to discuss a topic called evangelizing. Evangelizing. Now I know that it's not for everybody. Not everybody has the the function to function with the Holy Spirit as far as evangelizing. Some are called, you know, with the fivefold ministry, some are called to do other things. But to me, evangelizing is not just going out on the street preaching with a speaker and a crowd, I mean, a crew, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You can do that while you're at the supermarket. You can do that on the way down to, to, to wherever it is you're going. Uh, you can do it at your job. You can do it on... Um, when you're walking down the street and you see somebody that's that's in need or whatever, you, you can evangelize to that person. You can lay hands on that person. You can just walk up to people in your everyday life and your everyday activities and evangelize. Just because you're not with a crew, you're not on the street corner preaching the gospel doesn't mean you can't evangelize. You can evangelize wherever you are. You know what I'm saying? You can evangelize with your family, through your family. You know what I'm saying? If they're not walking in Christ, you can evangelize to them. You know what I'm saying? So, me personally, when I was a baby Christian, when I was still sipping, drinking the milk, I was a... Uh, Going to church every Sunday. Oh yeah, I was faithful. I was dedicated. I was loyal. I would be obedient to the Lord. But after a while, is this all there is to it? What is? What else is is involved? What else can I do? I, I just feel like a, after going to church for seven years. I felt like a fly on the wall, you know, just flying around. I was, I didn't even feel the Holy Spirit anymore. I was just saying, you know, you're coming to church, but I wasn't feeling it. I was like missing, something was missing. I was like, what is it that's missing? Hmm, what is it? Wow. And then a church member, a friend of mine, church member, of a Marcus, I'll never forget that day. We was talking. I said, "You know what? I'm, I'm not. I'm not okay feeling it anymore. I mean, there's got to be some more to it than being a Christian than this, than just going to going to church on Sunday." So he said, "Come with me." I went with him. We would. He drove to Tacoma Park, no Tacoma Subway, Tacoma Metro Station, and I said, "What you up to? What you doing?" I thought he was dropping me off at the subway and I really way uptown. I said, oh, no. He said, just wait. And so we got out and we walked to where the activity was. We saw a guy on the rail sitting on the rail. So, actually, he wasn't sitting. He was just like back on the rail. Like that. And this guy, he looked kind of menacing. You know what I'm saying? He had gang tats and everything. And Buffer Marcus just walked right up to him. I said, well, does he know him or something? Are they associates? I was like, oh, no, no, don't let it be. But nah, he uh, he asked the guy, the, the guy if he needed a prayer or wanted a prayer, and was he in it, feeling any pain? So he prayed for him and asked him if he had any pain in his body. I'm like, why is he asking him that? Because I didn't know at the time. And the guy said, yes, I have pain in my knee, pain in my leg. And he was walking with a light, slight, uh, you you have to walk, watch him closely to know that he had a limp, like limp. So, um, Buff Marcus laid hands on him. And he had to pain leave. All, all ligaments were new, 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 new ligaments. All nerve endings be restored. And next thing I know, the guy was started smiling and said, oh, yeah. And, uh, but when Marcus finished laying hands on him, the guy was like, how did you do that? I'm like, yeah, I, I want to know. I wanted to know as well. How did you do that? So the guy started walking. He was all happy. And Brother well, Marcus told him, you know, the gospel, that Jesus healed you. 
Jesus healed you. I said, Brother Marcus, that's it. That's it. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. That's it. That's that's my calling. That's what I want to do. There's more to 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 this. To, there's more to being a Christian than just going to church. This is it. So he said, you need to come with me next. Uh, oh yeah, ne next Saturday. So that following Saturday, I, we were we drove to Baltimore. Baltimore. I said, what are we going to do in Baltimore? Said, you see. Uh. 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 Um, you see, uh, I got something for you. And uh, so we go to Baltimore. I thought we were going to get some crabs. No, you know, Baltimore is famous for crabs. I'm like, okay, we're not getting crabs. So what is it? We're going sightseeing. He said, no, no, no. So he took me right there to Lexington Market, Lexington Avenue. And Lo and behold, there was a whole group of Christians out there, and some were some were laying hands on people, some were uh, evangelizing, uh, some had a table out, and they had a food distribution. And I'm like, whoa, this is now this is what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm, I'm they they active. They active. I'm like, okay, this is like something we need to do. They're fellowshipping and evangelizing and laying hands on people, taking the church to the street. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, taking the church to the street. So I'm like, oh man, we gotta introduce. He's a, he introduced me to everybody. Pastor Cody, uh, Brother Trello and his wife. And, Brother Jim, uh, later on it was Pastor, Pastor Brian, Brian, yeah, so PB, Brian. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is it. So we started going out, and, and, and that first day that I was with them, I saw Brother Trey on the mic, you know, like he was giving the word, he was preaching the gospel, he was giving the word, doing scriptures and everything. Yeah, the people across the street were looking at him, and I hope they was listening. So I said, you want to try? I said, no, uh -uh, don't give me that mic. I don't know. Uh -uh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I was like, nah, nah. But after watching him for about an hour, I was like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let me have that mic. Let me preach the word. And I, and I was preaching the gospel. I was preaching the word. I, I didn't even know the know the gospel that much. I didn't even know the but the Holy Spirit filled me up. The Holy Spirit was giving me the words, giving me I was speaking scriptures that I didn't even know I had in my head. The Holy Spirit was like and I was like there for 40, 40 minutes evangelizing with the mic and my and brother said, all right, give me the mic. Somebody else wanna preach. I said, nope, you ain't getting this mic. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, I got the mic. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I gave him the mic. But that was my first time. My first time preaching, my first time evangelizing. And after that, I became an addict. After that I started going out by myself, you know what I'm saying? I, we got back to DC. I went out and bought me a speaker. A nice speaker, and and it would it had two mics and everything, and and, and I always had the extra mic was on the side of the speaker for anybody else that wanted to uh any any anybody else wanted to give come give a testimony or preach the gospel, you know what I'm saying? You no, know? but I learned the hard way. Don't do that no more. I went out by myself about fifteen times total, different areas, you know what I'm saying. And out of that 15, five people uh, didn't like the words. Just one guy took my speaker and smashed it on the sidewalk and just threw it down. The other ones, they just came and knocked my tripod over. And I ended up by having to buy new GoPro, new phones, or whatever. But uh, I, I learned, you know, go out in twos. That's, that's what the um, disciples did. They went out in twos. So I... I asked somebody to wash my back, and I wash his back, you know what I'm saying? Wash his or her back. So uh, after that, I said, you know what? I'm going to start Swag Ministry. I came up with the name. I came up with, it. came up with the title, the name, the design, everything, you know what I'm saying? And 
And, you know, gradually people started joining Sister Jones joined because, uh, you know, scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and the rest will be added to you. And lo and behold, that he, he added a whole lot. We, we was like, we started with just me. And then we ended up with Sister Joan, Brother Elijah, uh, Total was, oh, Brother Marcus. It was like from one to three, there was seven to 20. And then it went from 20 to 14 to seven. Now it's just like five or six of us because the rest of them, they just dropped off. They dropped off and went back to the world. But I guess it wasn't for them. Being a Christian, it wasn't for them. They just, you know. Love the uh, world more than they love Jesus, but you can't put the world before Jesus because Jesus is permanent and the world, this world is temporary. And we are all just temporary. We are all missed. This is the, everything in this world is temporary, but Jesus is permanent. You feel me? So I know that evangelizing is not for everybody, but if you feel that you want to try it, give it a shot. You know what I'm saying? Give it a shot, because all you have to do is preach the true word of God, preach the scriptures, and you can even evangelize by giving testimony, you know what I'm saying? And um, my my ministry, Swag Ministry, we we uh, we not only evangelize, but we baptize, and people get healed to, to Jesus with us, and uh, we also have discipleship, and anybody that's interested, my link is down there. Just uh, email me and let me know. My email link is down there. Just email me or just leave a comment if you're interested, and I'll get to you. I'll get to you. Believe me, if you're in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia, DMV area, I'll get to you. Well, we can, we can, we can hook up. So just leave a... Uh, Leave a comment or email me and we'll hook up. But um, I, I thought that it was going to be something that I couldn't do. But now I, I can even go out on my own and preach the gospel because the, basically you don't have to know the whole Bible to preach the gospel because the gospel is Jesus. Salvation. That's the whole of the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is God's only son provides eternal life. You heard? God's only son provides eternal life. Yeah. And uh, just take some time out of your, your month and just take some time, maybe a day, a couple of hours a day. You know what I'm saying? And it's gradually, you're going to you're going to be like like I was when I first started out. I was like, no, I didn't even want that mic. I didn't know what to do. I was kind of inhibited, but the Holy Spirit brought those inhibitions out, made them disappear. You no, know, because we serve a God of love, and power, and respect, not a God of fear. We don't have the spirit of timidity in us. You feel me? So now it's just like, just like this. Every morning when I wake up, coffee. Every morning when I wake up, Jesus stayed on my mind. What can I do for the kingdom today? You know what I'm saying? What block should we go to in D.C., Maryland, Virginia? What block? What area? What, uh, what street? what county because it's all about jesus it's not about me anymore i humble myself before the lord i give him the increase well i take the decrease because it's not about me it's all about him so if you feel it in your heart that you 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 want to evangelize you want to be an evangelist i'm not saying you have to do a full time like me i'm retired so I got all the time in the world and I give all my time to the Lord now. I don't live that old life that I used to live. That's behind me. You know what I'm saying? The old is old and the new is new. I am a new creation. So it's what I can do 
for the kingdom, what I can do for you. You know what I'm saying? If if you want to be a disciple, come on, join our ministry. You know what I'm saying? Join our uh, WhatsApp swag ministry. You can join there too, as we keep it keep in touch with you, Trevor. You know when you when you're a disciple. Hmm. We don't leave you behind. We don't forget about you. When you get baptized, you become a part of our family. You're our family. You know, we all look out for each other. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's not like uh, you do it and then and then you're not, and then you're alone. You're not alone. You become part of the family. So uh, we're going to watch after you. You know what I'm saying? We, you're going to learn from us. It's called. That's why it's called discipleship because. You're training, you're learning to be a disciple. You know, you're training to know what and how to act with and what to do when your when your spirit feel. You know what I'm saying? So uh, you won't be left behind. You'll be a part of our family. You know what I'm saying? So I can go on WhatsApp and anybody if they want to play and if they want to play, we play for them. Whoever is there, we play for that person. You know what I'm saying? Or somebody's going through some things. They can call call me or call anybody in our ministry, and we can we can uh, talk it out. You know what I'm saying? Get some spiritual advice. You know what I'm saying? Because even me, I sometimes I go through stuff, but you're never alone. We are never alone. Amen. So anyway, my point is, everybody has a calling. Everyone has a calling. But it's up to you to answer, answer the Lord and and do your calling, do whatever it is the Lord has for you to do. Because we live in we live in His time, you know, you know what I'm saying? And we do His will, not our will. Because what was our will doing to us? It was destroying us day to day. It was destroying us, and we was still being disobedient. We didn't care. You know what I'm saying? We didn't care. We was like them. But now, we're totally opposite. Because we already know what's ahead of us, what's in store, because we are said to Jesus. And we want to share that joy. We want to we wanna share that excitement for those on the streets that are <clears throat> lost, like we was lost. How selfish is it of anyone? to receive the gift of eternal life with Christ Jesus and not share that with the world. You know what I'm saying? Not share that with the world because I'm not going to stay home and say, yeah, I'm going to heaven. What about my old friends? What about the people on the streets? What about that guy up the street who's sleeping on the cement every day? What about that lady over there who's heartbroken and has depression? She needs to hear the word. She needs to be touched by Jesus. You know what I'm saying? So really, it's not about you. You got to, even if you don't want to, go out. Preach the gospel. Even if you're not in the mood, go out. Preach the gospel. Do something nice. Do something that's going to edify somebody and lift them up and lift their spirits up. You know what I'm saying? The rewards will be waiting for you in heaven. When Jesus says, Child, well done, my humble and faithful servant, to ye into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. All right, I'm going to end this with like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to join our ministry, if you're in the DMV area, Leave an email down below. Amen. I hope y'all have a blessed, prosperous, prosperous rest of the day.